Guys, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear. Okay, bear with me because for some reason it's just, I, I, I was looking for the background that I have ready, but I don't know what happened, but I'm here, okay? So thank you so much. I'm going to, I mean, show you the background as it is right now, and then I'm going to look for the one that I have ready. So thank you very much for joining today, guys. Uh, my name is Marcela, and I'm going to be your teacher for this module, right? Um, well, actually, I just, I just got home like a few minutes ago, right? And I just got ready for the class, and um, that's the reason why. But I'm going to share with you the screen. Are you able to see the um, the presentation, guys? Yes. Very good. Okay, so we're going to begin. This is going to be our session number one. And I want to say welcome to uh, intermediate, I mean, per, um, in your cases, intermediate one, right? So welcome and thank you very much for choosing us and for joining today. Um, we're going to be, you know, um, talking about the different um, topics, right, that are included in your uh, platform. Now, in this case, right, uh, it's going to be little by little, right? I have, a, well, you already know how it works already, right? So um, it's just a little bit of um, background that I'm going to provide, okay? It's, así que bienvenidos, chicos, and thank you very much for joining today. So uh, a little bit about me, right? I have a BA in English teaching, right? And also I've been um, a teacher or a facilitator, right, of the language since 2012, right? And well, guys, I have been also working with English Cooperativo for quite some time. So here I am. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and let me know. So welcome and thank you for being here, okay? Now, um, we're going to talk just a little bit about some important details, right? That we just need to have as a quick reminder, okay? Um, remember that we have the WhatsApp group, right? All what you have to do is to go to your email, right? And in your email, there you will find the different links, right? For you to access to this uh, class, number one, right? You're going to access to the class and um, you're going to be able to find there the link, right, username and password for you to access to the platform. You can find also the link to the WhatsApp group. You just have to click on it and you will be automatically joined. Um, then the other um, link that you will find is the one for the YouTube channel, right? So that means that if you're unable, you know, to um, join the class, right? If you had an emergency, if something happens, you are able to go ahead and um, watch the video later once it is uploaded, okay? So about the group rules, guys, it's important to keep in mind some things, okay? And those are three things that you need to consider. One, always 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 keep the purpose of the group right that means eh, todo relacionado pues um, a la clase verdad al grupo and that's what we uh, need to be very careful with right then also be polite and respectful to each other right yo sé que ustedes ya, ya son verdad super amables super respetuosos but just a reminder okay and then the last thing all questions will be answered during class, right? No, no tengan pena de hacer sus preguntas. Traigan sus preguntas a la clase que con mucho gusto aquí las vamos a responder. Pero todo lo que tienen que hacer es anotar el número de ejercicio y el, la sección en, el que, en la que está. Y con gusto pues yo les voy a ayudar aquí a responder las preguntas. En el chat es un poco difícil responder preguntas, ¿verdad? No es lo mismo como tenerlos aquí en la clase y explicarles acá, porque probablemente no solo es una persona, sino que son varias personas que tienen esa pregunta, right? Así que that's the reason why just try to bring, you know, up your questions to the class, ¿ok? Entonces, eso es acerca del WhatsApp group. Ya están todos agregados, chicos, en el WhatsApp group. Ya todos le dieron clic al link que les enviaron. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Excellent. Yes, Great. Yes, teacher. 
very good. Now, um, another important thing, right, it's about homework and, and evaluations, right? Homework and evaluations are extremely important, right? Remember, and I know that you already know that, but this is just a reminder. And it is necessary, okay, to reach the 80%, right, average. So that means that you have to go through all the exercises in the platform and your goal is to get that 80%, right? So that's going to be 80% average of, you know, all the homework assignments and evaluations that you can find in the platform. So you can complete, you know, this module, right, um, the best way possible. Now, what else? Homework, as you know, homework assignments are in the platform and it is recommended to work on that just right after the class. I mean, if you can, right? So whenever we have class, if it is possible, just right after we finish, you can go ahead and you know, head to the platform and you are able to complete the exercises there. I mean, you can go ahead and work in advance, not a problem, right? Puede trabajar en adelantarse, no hay ningún problema. Y si tienes preguntas acerca de, las, de la sección 3 y apenas vamos en la 1, don't worry, no se preocupe. Usted puede hacer sus preguntas para que luego cuando alguien llegue allá por esa sección, pues ya tenga una idea de lo que están haciendo, right? Um, then also um, all the homework, right, assignments and topics, right, that we have already covered, right, as it says there need to be completed just before each Friday midnight. Um, since that, you know, a record is sent to Insufor weekly, right? So we need to be very careful, guys, with this. Uh, in my case, I sent a weekly reminder right, of the different, you know, homework assignments that we're going to be covering, right? So for this week, it's going to be unit, I mean, section one and section two, right? Entonces, cada vez que se acerque la semana, yo soy la que le mando un recordatorio, aunque yo sé que ustedes ya lo saben, I know that you work beautifully, right? But I just sent a quick reminder, like the one I'm about to send right now, ahorita se los voy a mandar, Y cada semana pues van a recibir uno parecido a este, solo que este es el de la semana uno, ok? So please try to um, stick to the plan, ¿verdad? Peguémonos al plan, because that's the most important thing, ok? Así que ahí está el primer anuncio, sí, this is week one, meaning that we're going to be working in sections one, and two, right? So, ¿qué dice mi, mi recordatorio? Well, it says, remember to work on the platform. Let's complete sections one and two in the platform during week one. And remember to bring your questions to class, right? So all your questions, guys, will be answered here. I love your questions. A mí me encantan las preguntas. Cuando ustedes, como estudiantes, hacen preguntas, I love questions. And it says any, you know, um, you know, supportive material, material, right, will be, you know, shared with you in any digital format, right? So, cuando yo de repente siento que algo, algo de lo que yo estoy explicando les va a servir, so I send it to you, right? Les tomo captura de pantalla y las comparto, o usted puede ir tomando sus capturas de pantalla, no hay ningún problema, right? So, um, uh, homework and evaluations, right? As I was saying before, during week one, we're going to be working with sections one and two, okay? Um, then week two, we're going to work in um, section three at mid the midterm exam, okay? During week three, we're going to be working in section four. And during week four, we're going to be working sections five and the final exam, okay? So those are, you know, that's the plan. Ese es nuestro plan, ¿verdad? No hay cosa más genial que saber para dónde vamos y saber cuándo lo tenemos que completar. So remember, guys, before each Friday, try to complete all the sections that are required for you to be able to move to the next level, okay? Um, do you have any questions so far, guys? Questions so far? Questions so far? No question, teacher. So good. No, teacher. Thank Excellent you. so far. So good. There you go. Okay, muy bien. Todo bien hasta el momento. Excellent. So let's go ahead and just have another quick reminder, right? Just remember as soon as you join the class, okay, don't forget to uh, click on the, uh, you know, silence button, right? So just try to 
um, not to open the microphone, right? Uh, whenever, you know, there's an explanation taking place or one of your classmates is participating. So we cannot, we don't interrupt, right? So that's something uh, important, right? And uh, we're going to also, oops. Por estar, por estar viendo si era alguno de ustedes que me está despidiendo que si voto el teléfono, sorry. Entonces, uh, don't forget to add your name, right, in the, uh, whenever you access to the meeting, right, add your name as in your doing, right? So we know that it is you, the one who joined the class, okay? Uh, turn on your camera, I mean, if it's possible, right? I know that sometimes it's very difficult and you can tell me, no, teacher, the thing is that I'm busy right now or teacher, no, I'm just, you know, cooking and, you know, listen to the class right now or I'm taking care of my kids, etc. So I totally understand. So if it is possible, just turn on your camera, right? Have active uh, participation, okay? And also you can use the chat whenever you need to tell me something and you don't want to open the microphone. That's totally fine, okay? Then uh, raise your hand, okay? Whenever you want to participate, don't forget to raise your hand, okay? Um, if we have an activity where you want to, you know, um, participate and you have the answer, raise your hand. Para que no hable el uno, verdad, sobre el otro. Always, you know, let's keep this environment respectfully, right? So I know that you are, but just a reminder, right? And then about the attendance, right? The attendance is very important, guys, right? Just don't forget, try to be here most of the class, right? La idea es que usted pues nos acompañe eh, durante todas las clases, right? Eh, Pues la idea es que al menos esa asistencia del 80% usted se acá. ¿Para qué, teacher? Para que pueda absorber la mayor parte de los contenidos pues que están dentro de la plataforma y que yo voy a compartir aquí con ustedes. Okay. And then also the development in the platform, right? Eh, don't forget to go little by little. Okay. No esperemos a llegar hasta la semana tres, semana cuatro para completar todo. No, guys, let's go little by little, okay? I will, I will be sharing you up, okay? Yo les voy a estar recordando y les voy a estar ahí eh, mandando pues un recordatorio simple. Well, we're beginning classes today, right? And it's the eighth, no es cinco, right? En nuestro caso, eh, la mayoría comenzó cinco, pero en nuestro caso, pues, es ocho. El, el, el comienzo de las, de las clases, lo voy a cambiar aquí. It's the eighth. And also, it's going to be from eight to nine, right? And the class is, uh, you know, it lasts for six, 60 minutes, right? And pretty much all of the ones that you can see on the on the screen, those are the requirements, right? At the very end of the course, you're going to receive a diploma, right? So make sure that uh, everything is, you know, done, complete, and you can download it from there. Okay, so any questions, guys? Questions? No teacher. Great, thank you so For much. Me, no. Okay, very good. Now let's take a look at the platform. Okay, so guys, we're going to be working with, with very interesting topics. And some of you probably went already here, right? You go to the course, right? And you will be able to find the five different sections, right? So we're going to be working with the following sections right a time to remember or a time to remember right uh caught in in the rush right caught in the rush time for a change and i've never heard of that right and the last one which is going places so as you can see guys from the very i mean from the topics you can see that we're going to talk a little bit about simple past simple past is one of my favorite topics and if you ask me, if you ask me, teacher, ¿cuál será más difícil? Presente, pasado, futuro. Well, at least to me, in my case, my the one that I consider is a little bit more difficult is present simple, right? Why, teacher? Because we have to decide if it's, you know, third person singular or if it is, you know, um, the third person plural, uh, first person singular, etc. right? So I have to decide, is it do or does? Is it don't or doesn't, right? Do I need to add ES or S? So 
present simple, it's a little bit more complicated, pero no es difícil, solo hay que, necesita mucho enfocarse bastante en lo que estamos diciendo para aplicar la regla correcta. So the difference here, guys, is that with, with, with simple past is very nice because the rules are few, you know, a few rules, and also we don't have, you know, many elements, right? Por eso es que simple past is being, is, is mucho más simple, right? Now, the only difficult part here, it's whenever you have to remember the simple past of some verbs, right? For example, if it's uh, see, then is so, right? If it's catch, is caught. If it's think, it's thought, etc. Right? So that's the only thing. And there is when your memory comes into play, right? So you have to learn some of the verbs by heart, but we're going to work on that uh, little by little. Now, for the... me, it's so complicated. Oh, for really? Me, Why? For me, for me it's so complicated. Uh, uh, the better past. The simple past. Okay. Yeah. And tell me, why do you think it's, uh, what do you find difficult whenever we talk about simple past? I mean, is it the structure? Uh, is it the verb? What is it? The structure. The structure. is different in, in the bare present. Oh, uh, yeah, most definitely. But don't worry. Actually, we're going to be covering that, right? My favorite part when it comes to tenses, guys, is that in my case, I feel more comfortable whenever we have a formula. Yo me manejo con fórmulas y con diferentes elementos. Es como, para mí son, las cosas son un patrón, right? And as long as you know the pattern, as long as, long as you know the elements that you include in your sentence, you're going to be fine, okay? And I'll teach you how. So right now we're going to start working with the first topic, right? And can I have a volunteer to read the objective, please? Well, raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Don't forget that. Who wants to read the objective? Bear with me, guys. Oh, thank you, uh, Maria Alberto, please. Okay, um, lesson objective, mm -hmm. uh, bookmark this page. By the end of this class, you will be able to talk about your past using was, were, and various regular and irregular verbs. E.g., I was born in Korea. I grew up in the United States. I moved here 10 years ago. I didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. Additionally, you'll be able to ask and answer the question in the past tense. This, conversa this conversational English lesson will help you discuss your background in greater detail and get to know people. Very good, excellent. Thank you so much for helping me with that. I just wanted to correct something very quickly here. Um, here guys, aquí hace falta un two. You will be able to ask, you will be able Two, aquí hace falta un two, and detail, right? Detail, very good. Just making sure, right, I'm correcting that. Thank you so much. Now, guys, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the structure, right? So that's our first uh, objective. And I'm going to focus on the first uh, section, right? Because here, uh, I think it was Miguel, right? Here, Miguel, we're going to uh, probably we're going to organize the idea, okay? Aquí es donde vamos a organizar la idea, chicos, y también por, uh, para que ustedes entiendan por qué algunas veces es, ustedes lo ven, nosotros lo vemos, porque pues yo también fui un estudiante, nosotros lo vemos un poco complicado y es porque debemos, di, debemos de dividir en dos secciones. And I will let you know how, how we do that. So the first section, guys, whenever we talked about simple past is this one, okay? That is the first part was and where. So we're talking about verb B first, okay? And then the second part, you know, of um, simple past is whenever we're using verbs like the ones you see me right now highlighting, right? So here, guys, whenever we talk about simple past, we're going to divide it into different sections, okay? I will open this here. Okay, so simple pass, right? 
first question, guys. When do we use simple past? Any volunteer? When do we use simple past? Volunteer? Cuando usamos simple past? Yes, Jose Luis? No? Daisy? O quien levantó la mano? I'm sorry. Anyone? Any idea? Teacher, así usamos el simple past. So why, why do I use simple past or when do I use it? Yes, Miguel? Yes, uh, uh, in the change, uh, the in the change, the verb, uh, for example, uh, forget in present, in forgot and simple, simple plus, sim, mm -hmm. simple plus. Okay, so in that case, you had mentioned something about form, okay? So uh, we have verbs in present, right? And then we have in past, and you're giving me an example, which is forget, forgot, okay? But that's about format, okay? Uh, yes. But what about the usage? In, in my, I'm sorry, in my, in my case, uh, is, is, is complicated. Uh, eh, me cuesta un poco. Uh -huh. Pero ya va a ver que no, ya va a ver que eh, vamos a ir desglosando. Yes, eh, Maylin, thank you. Ok. Ok. Um, I, think that, I think that we can use simple pass uh, when we are talking about a situation that maybe uh, whether you do whether you did yesterday or something like that. Uh, for example, if you want to explain um any situation that happened in the 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 last day or the last um hours or, or something like that mm -hmm. very good so that's you know like the big part whenever we're talking about simple past right so we use simple past to talk about past events but now there is a keyword here guys and Let's put it like this. We use simple past to talk about past events or my favorite phrase is completed actions. Okay? O sea, acciones que han sido completadas en el pasado, right? If I'm talking about something that started in the past and finished in the past, so there is what I'm going to use simple past. Si la acción comienza en el pasado y termina en el pasado, so I use simple past, okay? Now, um, now that we have, you know, uh, specified, right, the usage of simple past, let's talk about the form, okay? Um, we have two topics. Digamos que tenemos dos temas separados de simple past, okay? Lo mismo sucede. I want you guys to go back to basic one. Quiero que se acuerde de basic one, y si no hizo basic one, quiero que se acuerde de, la, de las primeras clases de inglés que tuvo, okay? ¿Qué es lo primero que le enseñan? ¿Qué, qué estructura es la primera que le enseñan en Simple Pass? Perdón, en, 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 en las primeras clases de inglés. What is the first thing? Estructura do gramatical. And, do and does. No. Subject. Ese es el que viene después, Miguel. ¿Cuál le enseñan antes? El primerito mm -hmm. que enseñan. Where to be? Exactly. Okay, that's correct. So whenever you start uh -huh, with classes, right, in English, the very first thing they teach is verb be. Okay, I'm a teacher, she's a student, right? They're my brothers, right? Um, my sister is in the room, right? I am a teacher, she's a doctor, etc. So we, we talked about simple past. Then when, when we are ready with simple past, the teacher explains the next topic, okay? So Miguel gave you a hint, but Miguel ya les dio una pista. ¿Cuál es el siguiente tema? Ese es el primero. Les enseñan present simple of verb be, ¿verdad? Y luego les enseñan el qué? Simple past to be. Sí, ya lo vamos a ver. Pero Miguel mencionó auxiliares. Él dijo do and does. So when we use do and does, we're talking about simple, simple present of other verbs. Okay, yeah. exactly. 
Entonces, aquí es donde yo quiero que quede esa como aclaración, right? Entonces, no es que hay varios temas de simple past, no, right? Es un, es un tema que se divide en dos. Simple past of verbi and simple, perdón, simple present of verbi and simple present of other verbs. ¿verdad? Aquí en simple present of other verbs es cuando yo ya, ya incluyo verbos, right? So I start like, I brush my teeth every day, I have lunch with my coworkers at the office, etc. Okay? Now, this is just like, like the big picture. Now, when we move to simple past, right? We see two topics again, right? We see simple past of verb B first, right? And then we see, or we study, right? Simple past, oops, simple past with other verbs, okay? Entonces, por eso es que a veces lo sentimos complicado, porque en realidad el tema se divide en dos secciones, right? Por supuesto, vamos a comenzar con lo primero, right? Which is simple past of verb B. Now, there is one characteristic, guys, about, about the verb B, okay? La característica más genial, right, that we have about verb B is just, I call it like this. Yo llamo al verb B the independent guide. Independent guy. Okay. So verb B is the independent guy, meaning that he doesn't need any help, right? It's like he can be I um, mean affirmative, he can be, he can become negative, he can become a question, right? Um, she's my sister. She isn't my cousin. Is she my sister, right? Um, well, you are the teacher. You aren't the doctor. Are you the teacher, right? So verb B is just wonderful because you don't need anything else. No necesita nada más. Now, on the other hand, yes, I'm sorry, Diga. No, no, teacher. No, sorry. okay, don't worry. On the other hand, with simple present and with simple past, we need auxiliaries, right? So you need some help. So digamos que aquí no help is needed, right? Es bien egoísta. No help is needed. No necesita ayuda, right? And here, right? They, this one needs helpers. Necesita ayudantes, right? And those helpers are aus, 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 auxiliary. Perdón, no es auxiliary. Es auxiliary. Liari. Ay, ari. Okay? Entonces, eh, here I need auxiliaries and that's the difference. Esa es la diferencia. Ok. Entonces, guys, so far so good. ¿Estamos bien hasta el momento dividiendo estas dos secciones? Yes. Bye. Very good. Excellent. Now, vamos a poner hands on. Ok. And we're going to start talking about the first part, which is... Ay, permítame, vamos a dejar de compartir esta and I'm going to start sharing the other presentation. And now we're going to talk about simple past of the verb B, okay? Now, guys, eh, before, before we, I move, you know, into this part, because probably you already know a little bit about this, right? Don't worry, there will be one section for you to talk. Ya luego hablan ustedes, but first I need to explain the topic, right? So let's see. Can you give me just uh, like right now, can you give me a couple of examples of um, verb B with sim in simple pass, please? Just a couple of examples. Just with verb B, okay? Uh, yes, Maylin. Es que tiene la manita levantada, pero se pregunta. No. No. <laughs> Anyone? No? I'm sorry. It was my bad. But um, you mentioned something about verbs in past, right? No, no, no. Uh, right now, vamos ahorita a hablar del paso verb B. ¿Puede alguien darme una o dos oraciones como ejemplo usando verb B en simple past? Solo quiero sondear. Quiero sondear si algunos pues, me pueden dar un par de oraciones. And was forget the, and was, uh, forget the, the case. Mm, uh, and was forget uh, the password. Vaya, acá, si usted se fija, me está, me está mezclando dos temas. Me está mezclando el verbo to be 
con otros verbos. Entonces acá salen dos oraciones, right? Mm -hmm. I was worried. Normal. Okay. I was worried because I forgot my password, right? Okay. Yo estaba preocupado porque per, 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 porque olvidé mi password, right? Entonces aquí son dos oraciones, right? I was worried because I forgot my password, pero no puedo decir. Correct. I'm sorry. It's correct. Uh, I was forgot the password. No, it's not. Because you are putting two verbs together that at this point do not belong there. Okay. Ya nosotros cuando empezamos a utilizar el verbo to be con otros verbos, entonces ese es un tense diferente. ¿Cómo se llama, chicos, cuando incluyo verb be y otros verbos? As participle. In the past form. Mm -mm. Son los continuos. Ok. Es I'm um, talking in English. Right. Um, she's um, cooking in the kitchen. Helen de Mapia. Ok. Then um, they were dancing at the party. Ok. Pero este no es el tema, ¿verdad? Entonces aquí es donde entro yo, que esa es mi parte favorita. Mi parte favorita es ayudarle como a organizar los tenses, ¿ok? Entonces, okay. esto, chicos, que ustedes ven acá, es otro tema. Esto se llaman, son los continuous tenses. Present continuous, past continuous, future continuous, ¿ok? But we're not talking about them right now. So, eso, chicos, es importantísimo, right? Que nosotros conozcamos la diferencia entre el presente del verbo to be presente con otros verbos, pasado del verbo to be pasado con otros verbos. They cannot go together. No pueden ir juntos los dos verbos. Es como poner dos verbos juntos que en ese contexto no van a menos que sean continuous, ¿verdad? Si ya estoy hablando yo de un pasado continuo, entonces sí. They were dancing y cuando hablo de continuous es porque yo estoy agregando la partícula ing a esos otros verbos. ¿De acuerdo? Eh, dígame, Saidi, no sé si tenía pregunta. ¿O no? No, no, era, uh, I, I was thinking about the, uh, the sentence that you were asked. Ah, ok, perfect. Do you have an example? No? Yes, maybe... Uh, she was at the park. Ah, okay. She was at the park. She, oops, she was at the park. Muy bien. Vaya. Pero a todo, a todo esto, verdad, chicos? Eh, what is the translation of verb be into Spanish? In Spanish, el verbo to be es? Cero estar. Cero estar. Very good. Right? So that means that we have two different contexts, right? I can say she was at the park, right? Ella estaba en el parque. Y puedo decir, I'm a, I, I, was, um, I was a teacher at the school. Yo era una maestra en la escuela, right? Entonces, we need also to check the two different contexts, right? So, ser o estar, right? So, here I cannot use two verbs together. Aquí no puedo usar los dos verbos en pasado juntos porque ellos dos son de dos grupos diferentes. En pasado. Si ya estamos hablando de past continuous y tenemos un ing agregado a ese verbo, entonces ahí sí el contexto pues es diferente, es un different, es un different tense, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahora que ya más o menos, ¿verdad? Eh, vamos viendo cómo funciona, me voy a pasar a lo que les traje acá. Ok, entonces tenemos acá de pass of verb B. So we have the affirmative form, the negative form, and the question form. So for now, guys, what I want you to do is to forget about the rest of the verbs, right, just for a moment, and let's focus only with the verb be, okay? So I have the different, you know, subject pronouns. Estos que están acá, estos que ven ustedes acá se llaman subject pronouns, right? All of these, okay? Entonces, we have uh, the subject pronouns divided in two sections. Right, tenemos dos secciones diferentes, right? Tenemos la primera, right? Where we have, digamos, los, 
subjects, pero que son singulares. And then we have the ones that are in plural, okay? And that's the reason why we have two different uh, forms of verb being past, right? En presente tenemos tres, tenemos am, is, and are. Pero en pasado solo tenemos dos, que es was and where. So, was is, it belongs to the first group, to the singular uh, subjects, okay? And then where belong, or belong, yeah, that form belongs, right, to the plural subject pronouns, okay? Yo no puedo decir I wear in my bathroom, okay? Yo digo I was in my bathroom, right? So uh, the subject and the verb agreement, you know, is very important. And the same happens, you know, in the negative form. In the negative form, the only thing that changes, right, is that it's negative, right? And we have the same groups, right, that are represented here, okay? Now, with the negative form, teacher, ¿se usa la forma contractada o la no contractada? Both, right? Remember, um, cuando nosotros usamos contracciones, chicos, es para, para speaking, right? Speaking, if you speak, you use as many contract, contractions as possible, right? Las contracciones son para cuando nosotros hablamos, para nos dirigimos a los demás, we used a lot of contractions. Ya cuando estamos haciendo un papel formal, un documento, un reporte formal en inglés, entonces pues es recomendable no usar contracciones, ¿verdad? Sino que más que todo son para usarlas de forma verbal, okay? And then we have the question form, right? Now with the question form, there is a switch, right? There is a switch between the verb and the subject, okay? Entonces tengo acá, que ya no es I was, eh, sino que digo was I, no digo he was, sino que was he, right? Um, no digo she was, digo was she, etc. And the same happens here, okay? So that, those will be, guys, the three different, you know, um, type of sentences that we're going to have, okay? So any questions so far? ¿Alguna pregunta hasta el momento, chicos? No, sure. Okay. No, very good. Excellent. You're welcome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put it into practice. If you want to participate, right, probably just raise your hand and you can read the sentences that uh, will follow in the next example. Ah, bueno, hagamos una cosa. Esto, por ejemplo, siento que es importante, so I'll share it with you through the WhatsApp group. Se escucha como que Iris no tiene buena conexión. Iris, fíjese que no le escuchamos, se le escucha robótica su voz, pero creo que es porque por la conexión. Espero me, eh, no sé si me escuchó Iris. Se le escucha como cortado lo que me dijo. Tal vez si me lo escribe en el chat. Me lo dijiste en el chat para que podamos ver ahí. Vale, entonces, let's complete the, the following exercises. Y lo vamos a hacer utilizando el cuadrito que les acabo de mandar. Ok. Vale, entonces, let's go. So, please read the sentences and let's go ahead and complete them together. Lo vamos a completar juntos, ok. So what you can do, right, is that um, tome solo la captura de pantalla y vaya escribiendo las respuestas, nada más, solo la respuesta, ¿verdad? No escriba toda la oración para que pues, no le tome mucho tiempo, ¿ok? Entonces, let's begin. Uh, what about number one? Volunteer for number one? Volunteer for number one? Dígame, Margarita, y then, y luego Saidi. Ok. Now, Jessica is a home, but let's with she was on vacation. Very good, right? She was on vacation. Mm -hmm. So, vamos a ver el contraste, right? Entre, entre el verbo to be in present and verb to be in the past, okay? So, now, Jessica is at home, but last week she was on vacation, right? Muy bien. What about number two, Saidi? 
Okay. Today is rainy, but yesterday it was sunny. Very good. Excellent, right? So it's raining today, right? But it was sunny yesterday. Thank you, eh, Gabby, please. Okay. This year there is a jazz festival. Here and last year there was a pop festival. Very good. There was a pop festival, okay? So this year there is a jazz festival, but last year there was a pop festival. Thank you so much. Uh, who's next? You can see? Raise your hand so I can see your name, you know, coming on the screen. Anyone? Uh, Mario, yes. Okay. Today, Mr. Brown is at work, but yesterday he was sick. Okay, very good. Exactly right. So today he's, he is at work, but yesterday he was sick. Very good. Um, what about you, Daisy? Creo que está ahí está. In these days, there are houses here, but a hundred years ago, Mm, there were trees. Correct. Excellent, right? So uh, these oh, days there are houses, years, right? But there, but years ago there were trees. Okay, very good. What about number six? Uh, Mylene, I don't know if you want to participate. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, today I feel fine, but yesterday I was in bed all day. Correct, right? So today I feel fine, but yesterday I was sick, right? I was on bed, I mean in bed. Thank you so much. What about number seven? Uh, any volunteer? Raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Just Me teach. Go ahead. My mother is a manager now, uh, but she... <laughs> Ahí está la respuesta, vea. Yes, yes, was... <laughs> Así dejemos la porque Just a no shop has Correct. Give me a second. Ahí está. Es que no me dejaba quitarlo porque ahí está, porque no haya movido el botoncito ahí está. Y sí, ya va a aparecer. Uh, but she was just a shop assistant last year. Muy bien. Okay, number eight. Volunteer for number eight. Come on, guys. You can do it. Hey, Carla. Well, Carla y luego José Luis. Okay, Carlita. Okay, today is Saturday and we are at home, but yesterday we were at school. Very good, right? We were at school. Okay, thank you so much, Jose Luis. Thank you, Carla. This summer we stayed at home, but last summer we were in Greece. Okay, very good. Right, this summer we stayed at home, but last summer we... Repeat it one more time. We're in Greece. Correct. Thank you so much. And the last one, guys, the last one. I mean, from this exercise, of course. Yes, eh, Erika. Uh -huh. Today, Tina and Jack are tired because yesterday they were at the gym. Okay, they were at the gym, correct. Very good, guys, excellent. So here, all what we are seeing is a contrast between a um, verbi, you know, present simple verbi and simple past verbi, okay? Now that we have the elements, and this is, you know, what I do, ¿verdad? Porque en mi caso, chicos, eh, lo voy a poner así. Siempre he recibido como ese comentario de teacher, es que yo, yo quiero a veces decir las cosas, pero no sé cómo decirlas, o yo eh, tengo la idea, pero no sé cómo expresarla. Lo que nos puede ayudar aquí, chicos, whenever we're learning, you know, a new language, because actually this is not a la our language, right? We're not native speakers. I am not a native speaker, right? But it, I do it in Spanish, of course, right? In español, si todos somos nativos, verdad, Lante nativo, but not in English, right? So what I recommend is for you to write down the formula or the pattern, right? Formula or pattern. 
teacher, ¿qué es un pattern? Un pattern es un patrón, ¿ok? Un pattern es, son element, diferentes elementos que van, ¿verdad? En una secuencia, ese es un patrón, ¿ok? Entonces, I call it formula or pattern. So, de lo que ustedes ven acá en estas oraciones que, que, que ustedes mismos acaban de completar, ¿ok? Tell me, what is the formula for a sentence in, in affirmative way? What is the formula? Subject. Muy bien. Okay, tenemos plus un subject. Verb. Mm -hmm. Plus complement. Exactly, that's it, right? Now, aquí vamos a especificar también que es verb B, ¿verdad? Para que ya cuando okay. veamos los otros verbos, también veamos la diferencia. Excelente. So, those are the elements that we need, right? Subject, verb B, and a complement. Okay? Y si es negativa, ¿Qué es lo que va a cambiar? Subject uh -huh. plus verb B uh -huh. plus not plus complement. Very good, right? So it's going to be verb B, but this time it's going to be in negative, right? Plus complement, very good. Now guys, if I want to ask a question, Ok, viendo ahí la imagen que les mandé, right? If I want to ask a question, ¿cuál es la fórmula para las preguntas? Did. Mm, did, can I use did here? The verb. No. Ah, verb B. Verb B, muy bien. B. Plus subject, plus complement. Muy bien, plus subject, plus... Did this, did this. Did this in past uh, is correct. Yep. Remember, okay. ahorita, eh, y creo que ahí es donde va la confusión que usted me comentaba, eh, Miguel. Okay. Eh, el did solamente lo voy a usar con los otros verbos, pero no con el verbo to be. Ok. Si usted okay. se acuerda, les estaba comentando acá, ¿verdad? Que el verb be tiene esta característica, que él es independiente. Y les decía que él no necesita ayuda. Entonces, yes. por lo tanto, el solito se puede hacer afirmativo, el solito puede ser negativo y el solito se puede hacer pregunta, right? Okay. Pero okay. les comentaba, right, that with the other verbs, ahí sí, ok? Uh, it, it needs helpers. Necesitan ayudantes y ahí es donde viene el did más adelante. Mm -hmm. Ok, thank you. You're welcome. Ok, so there, right, uh, well, here we're going to specify that it's a verb. Eso es ancudo. Se aprovecha, fíjense, porque cuando estoy ahí haciendo oficio o alguna cosa, por allá, en media vez me ven aquí sentadita, como no puedo hacer nada con ellos, ¿verdad? están aprovechando. Ok, entonces tenemos verb B, subject complement, and at the end, we please do not forget to add a question mark. Ok, entonces ahí está, chicos. Eso es prácticamente lo que yo necesito, ¿verdad? Para... Eh, eh, para hacer mis oraciones. Recordemos, ahorita solo estamos hablando de present simple with per B. Y pues yo, yo generalmente comparto lo que paso aquí en la, en la pan, lo que pongo aquí en la pantalla. Entonces ya se los voy a compartir en el chat. Ok, ahí se los comparto en este chat. Y lo que yo recomiendo es, teacher, es que no lo puedo anotar, no lo anote, solo tomen una captura de pantalla dentro del chat de Zoom. Y ya le queda a usted, vea. Poner esto acá. Yo porque todo escribo, yo así soy, ¿verdad? No sé si hay gente como, como yo, ¿verdad? Eso lo voy a borrar porque no lo, termine, no lo expliqué bien y no quiero confundir ese pedacito. Eh, acá sí, eso sí lo vamos a poner. Lo vamos a ingresar, mejor dicho, lo vamos a ingresar. Sí, Ajá. Algo que me ayudó mucho a mí en el módulo anterior, eh, la teacher que teníamos, que... Eh, Hizo un documento en Google y ahí lo iba alimentando. Ella, igual que usted, escribía todito. Todito las explicaciones, las reglas, así lo iba escribiendo. Y ese, bueno, a mí me sirvió porque yo lo imprimí para poder ir repasando y después eh, retroalimentar las dudas o salir, sacarme dudas yo misma. Uh -huh. Pero, pero es así, así ella, igual que, que, que usted explica y escribe todo. Uh -huh pero en un documento de Google para poderlo compartir el enlace con los compañeros en el chat y ahí solo se iba alimentando diariamente lo, la clase que iba dando. Está bien, está bien la idea, ¿verdad? I'll try, I'll try, ¿ok? As you can see, 
tengo, este, este tema que había mojado porque a, llegué justo a tiempo después de trabajo para dar la clase, pero de, le me sí, déjenme encontrar el momento y cuando yo tenga algo listo, entonces con gusto se los comparto, ¿ok? okay uh, ya, yeah. you. you're welcome, sí, sí, guys, I, be, I mean, eh, justo cuando empecé con la clase de ustedes tuve un cambio en mi trabajo, entonces it's going to be a little bit difficult porque no, no, no voy a tener fin de semana libre, entonces... Uh, let's see. Let me see what I can do. Ok. Y a lo más yo los tengo listos. Voy a, voy a guardar porque a mí siempre me quedan las, las cosas del, de los, de los, de los, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Ay, de los chats. <ríe> Ay, Dios mío, se me está olvidando la palabra de los chats. Entonces ahí voy a ir agarrando, ¿verdad? Para tenerles un documento listo. Y si no, pues aquí lo vamos a ir armando. Don't worry. Let me see if I can have it by tomorrow. Déjeme ver si lo tengo ya para mañana. Voy a apartar un momentito en la mañana para hacer eso, ¿verdad? Y con gusto se lo voy a ir compartiendo. ¿De acuerdo? Ok, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the suggestion, ¿ok? Bye. Entonces, ahora que ya vimos cómo funciona, ¿verdad? La eh, información, la, perdón, la, 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 el, la estructura, ¿verdad? Let's go ahead and make up some questions, ¿ok? Um, let me see. It says Kim spent last weekend in Madrid, right? Ask her some questions using was or where, okay? Esa actividad era para irnos a los breakout rooms y hacerlas ahí y pues que ustedes hicieran preguntas, pero solo tengo ya only six minutes, okay? Así que let's go ahead and work, you know, in, during these six minutes in this exercise and then we will continue tomorrow. No sé si ustedes leyeron en el correo, chicos, que en el caso de su grupo va de lunes a viernes, ¿verdad? Así que recordemos que mañana yes. tenemos clase. Ajá, perfect. Very good. Eh, let's go ahead and complete this. semana, Yes. Sí, sí todo hour. el módulo. Uh -huh. One hour. Es todo el módulo, es correcto. One hour. ¿Perdón? Today. Una hora todos los días. Sí. Yes, it's one hour every day, 60 okay. minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So let's go ahead and make up the questions. Hagamos las preguntas, ¿verdad? Y luego, pues, al final de la clase, los últimos tres minutitos, lo, la vamos a revisar. ¿De acuerdo? So you have uh, three to four minutes. Tome captura y, pues, solo escriba, ¿verdad? La respuesta. Don't, you don't have to write down everything, ¿ok? Ok, teacher. Very good. Mañana hacemos un repaso rapidito, ¿verdad? De lo que vimos hoy. Pero ya mañana, pues, le voy a dar una introduction a lo que es pasado simple con otros verbos, right? Y, pues, um, ya cuando veamos past simple with other verbs, entonces ahí sí, ¿verdad? Va a ser necesario que desempolvemos, ¿verdad? Los, uh, la lista de verbos que probablemente tenemos por ahí about simple past, right? And, and um, to start working on it, right? Um, con los verbos en pasado, chicos, pues yo pienso que es como práctica, ¿verdad? Yo lo que recomiendo es cuando nosotros tenemos, pues, que sentimos que algo, que algo nos está como fallando en, 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 en comprensión, ¿verdad? Es ocupar tiempo. Por ejemplo, en mi caso, ¿verdad? Cuando yo, when I wash the dishes, right, I listen to podcasts or an audiobook, right? En el caso de usted, si usted siente teacher, a mí me cuesta este tense. Entonces, ponga, ¿verdad? Mientras maneja, puede ir escuchando, no sé, alguna explicación. Hay incluso canciones, ¿verdad? Para que usted se aprenda los verbs in past, ¿ok? I'll share, with, I'll share one with you. Hay una que... En particular, los estudiantes siempre sienten que les, que les sirve. So, um, try to use those, you know, um, eso, esas actividades que son como bien automáticas, que, que le permiten ir escuchando, ¿verdad? Ocupemos ese tiempo para seguir aprendiendo, right? And also, I'll share with you some links. Les voy a compartir unos links en el chat para que usted pues siga practicando el tema que vimos, que estamos viendo el día de hoy. ¿De acuerdo? Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay. 
let me know when you are ready, okay? Me avisan cuando te estén listos. Para mientras como no, no tengo, no, no les, no les, no, no he, no tomado sus correos ni nada, solo les voy a compartir la imagen de la, de la explicación que yo hice en la, en la, en el blog de notas, ok, para que les quede la imagen. Sí, chicos, I'm sorry. Yo soy más de, más, más de screenshots, ¿verdad? De enviar screenshots. Pero ahí les mandé lo que, lo que expliqué yo en el, en el blog de notas. Ahí está cargando, ya les va a caer. Ok, so it's 59, so if you want, let's go ahead and check very quickly the, um, the answers, ok? So if you want to participate, please raise your hand. I'm going to show you the first one, right? So the first one, your hotel, good, right? So based on the, on the formula, the very first element is verb B, then the subject, and then the complement. So was your hotel good, right? That was... The, the example, Saidi, please. Number one. I have uh, something like that. Uh, were your room comfortable? Okay. Pero uh, where is for plural? Yes, but I, I think that I confused because is the, for the subject is like um, your, I'm confused, yes. <laughs> <laughs> your it's it's um it's different uh -huh. it's a possessive uh, possessive adjective mm -hmm. thank you so much you're welcome so in this case was right was your room you can say comfortable or comfortable comfortable no tiene nada que ver a como se escribe pero sí es más común decir it, it's very comfortable or you can use comfortable right very good what about number two thank you uh Maylin. Okay, um, uh, were the street full of people? Uh, I think number, it's number two. Um, the weather oh, is I'm nice. Sorry, I'm, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, okay. Uh -huh. Was the weather nice? Mm -hmm. Very good. Was the weather nice? Thank you so much. Uh, Paola, please. Were the streets full of people? Correct, right? Were the streets full of people? Very good. Next. Me. Okay, go ahead. Where this where the stores expensive? Very good. Right. Where are the stores expensive? Mm -hmm. Number five. Uh, Carla. Was the city exciting at night? Very good, right? Was the city exciting at night? Okay, number six. Meet. Go ahead, Meet. Margarita. Uh -huh. Were the mission interesting? 
Okay, where the museums, right? Museums. Interesting. Okay. Very good, excellent. ¿Y quién me dijo mi teacher? Alguien por ahí, un chico dijo mi teacher. Who was it? ¿Quién fue? No one? Okay, what about number seven? Number seven? Uh -huh. Where are the people friendly? Uh -huh. Very good, right? So where are the people friendly? Okay, and the last one, the last one, guys. Is your flight okay? Uh -huh. Muy bien, was your flight okay? Excellent. So, well, guys, good job. Um, as you can see, right, uh, sometimes we get a little bit confused whenever we mixed the simple past of verb B and the simple past of other verbs, okay? So it's important to know how both work so um, we don't mix them, right? Um, I'm going to stop here because it's time already, guys, but please start working in sections one and two. Si se adelanta y tiene preguntas, no importa. Usted me puede traer esas preguntas y yo con mucho gusto aquí se las contesto. Así que I'm going to stop here, guys. Thank you very much for joining today and let's meet tomorrow, okay? So have a good night. Teacher, uh, thank you. Tomorrow. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. In case no, no check list. No, it's a program no check a list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Take care, guys, and have a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. You're welcome. Bye bye.